Hey friends, welcome back to Beer and Beauty. It's Kasha here again. It's October 1st, so September's over and it's like officially Halloween. It's so exciting. I just realized that I've, this is the second video I'm shooting today and I just use the same exact intro in both. Oh well. <laughs> anyway, it's September favorites time. Today I'm going to be sharing with you lo what I was loving in the month of September. September was crazy busy for me because I worked the big deal fall festival that happens here in New England. It's called the Big E. It's been going on for like a hundred years and I was face painting there and I was working like 10 hour days so I wasn't doing a ton of makeup but uh, I did enjoy a lot of uh, skincare. I went to Canada this month. I went to Quebec City in Montreal which was magical and I tried a lot of great beer and yeah I'm about to tell you about all those things and some music too. So if you'd like to hear about what I enjoyed the most in the month of September, keep on watching. But first, it's that time of year, bitch. That's right. It's pumpkin beer time. Today's beer of the day is Rhodes Mary's Baby from Two Roads Brewing Company. This is one of my favorite pumpkin beers. It's amazing. I think this is what makes this beer stand out from other pumpkin beers is that it's aged in rum barrels so it gives it that an extra depth an extra kind of uh i don't know sinister kind of flavor like it says right here it's a scary good pumpkin nail i would definitely agree it's like eerily good perhaps is because i was watching a lot of vampire videos last night and a lot of breakdowns of different spooky female characters throughout uh, horror history like Vampyra and Morticia and Elvira and even Lily from the Munsters. Anyway, cheers to that. Let's uh, let's crack her open and give her a taste. Cheers. Whoops, I dripped a little. <laughs> but she is, oh, there's like a sinister nature. It's something, there's something velvety about it. There's something really different about it. And it's the way that it's aged in rum barrels for sure. And I just love the artwork and it just, I don't know. I've been enjoying this beer for a long time, for like years now. This has become my favorite like fall time beer. I just have so many memories to go with it, all good. I drink this in Salem, I drink this in just on Halloween night and I love it. Cheers to that. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of cheating with this first favorite that I'm sharing with you but because I just discovered this, but I just um, started dry brushing. I got my Eco Tools dry brush that I got from Target recently, and this is just effective. This is just an amazing way to get really smooth body skin without spending tons of money on exfoliators all the time and it also makes some more everyday exfoliators a little bit more effective so it keeps your skin really smooth it kind of hurts honestly what you do is you just before you get into the shower you brush with this brush in long strokes downwards and it just kind of smooths out your skin and removes any extra like it removes all those extra pesky dead skin cells that make your skin really dull and bumpy and um, just irritated and even like helps to treat like psoriasis and eczema to a degree too because it kind of sloths off that first layer of your skin and then it makes all your other products a little bit more effective when you use them like if you use like a moisturizing body wash or a, a different body polish or what have you it makes all those products work a little bit better. So I've been so happy that I discovered dry brushing because it's kind of changed my skin. And I've only done it like three times, but it's, uh, I already love the idea of it. I love the idea of having a product that doesn't run out, it doesn't go bad, and it makes my skin so much healthier and smoother and cell turnover and helps me fight some of my skin issues, like the psoriasis and the eczema and stuff like that too, so. It feels nice on the feet. It kind of hurts on this, the skin because I'm just so not used to doing it yet and my, my skin's like still, I'm a, I'm a sensitive little baby, <laughs> but I like, I like this. Dry brushing, great concept. As I was thinking about like, what were my favorite products, I was just like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I have any favorite products, but I did discover this month, this product I've been using for a long time, which is a really kind of a throwaway nothing product. This is a anti-aging eye treatment serum pen from the brand Italia. It's something that I got for free in a 
Shop Hush order a while ago. And it's an eye serum, and it's got aloe in it and vitamin B. Um, and it's just like a little roller ball. And at first I was just like, oh, I'm going to hate using this. This is going to be so dumb. But the thing is, I'm currently using the Kiehl's Avocado Eye Treatment, the eye cream from Kiehl's that's like really thick. It has the avocado in it. And I find it to be a little too thick. I feel like it doesn't sink into my skin well. But when I pair it with this, this kind of dilutes that a little bit. And both together work amazingly. And I kind of love... I'm loving aloe as an ingredient lately. It's anti -my Aloe is super hydrating, it's anti-inflammatory, it's soothing, it's it's just an amazing ingredient. It's highly underrated. This is especially nice to use after a day you've spent in the sun and it's cooling. I don't really suffer from bags lately because I've been folk, like prioritizing getting a lot of sleep and drinking a lot of water. So I've been really blessed to not have eye bags lately, but I feel like this, the cooling effect of this little pen would be really nice for eye bags. <laughs> oh, it could be even nice to throw in the fridge. Actually, that's a good idea. I haven't tried doing that yet, so I might try doing that. But yeah, it's been a fun little thing and it's just I don't know it's it, like I massage my little orbital bone with this pen and it just feels nice I like it would recommend I feel a little guilty about these next two products actually but the first product I feel a little bit guilty is the mask that I accidentally bought well I bought a mask on purpose and I broke my no buy but I guess it's a good thing that if I were to break my no buy on a product, it better be good, right? <laughs> you better like it. Uh, it'd be worse if I broke my no-buy on a product and I was like kind of meh about it or straight up didn't like it, right? So I guess it's good that I really like it. Um, this is the Amalgam d'Algu Mask Fresh Pour le Visage from uh, Lush. I got this when I was visiting Canada um, earlier this month and it's the it's a mask from Fresh, and it's got seaweed and aloe. Aloe, as I talked about, as an ingredient that I love. And it's interesting because when you put it on and you leave it on, it feels like a clay mask, and it feels like it's going to be really stripping. And, like, it really kind of dries up on your skin and feels like one of those tight clay masks that are going to really extract things out of your pores and be really stripping and I feel like it, it is a really purifying mask but at the same time every time I use it my skin is so soft it's so touchable I feel like I don't know I don't know what this mask is doing to me my skin seems amazing after I use it it's just so soft and smooth and it feels exfoliated but I this isn't much of an exfoliator it must it must be the kelp or the seaweed not the kelp and the aloe but I don't know what else must be inside this mask that makes my skin feel so awesome but it just does yeah lush strikes again basically everything I've ever gotten from lush I've just absolutely loved I've never gotten one of their masks before, so it was fun to try this one out, and I ended up really loving it. Like, I've used it like three times throughout the month. I try not to use it more than once a week. I feel like more than once a week would be too much, but it's been absolutely worth it, and I love it. It doesn't smell like much, and it's got little seaweed particles in it, and yeah, as you can see, uh, I've got a pretty good dip into it already. There are the three uses I've gotten out of it. So that is the fresh uh, aloe and seaweed mask, or the, or AKA Amalgam Dalyu uh, fresh mask. The next product that I have been loving in the month of September, I feel kind of bad because I don't want to be a person that in my favorites, I'm constantly just talking about new products I've been trying. But I did get this in my boxy charm this month, my L boxy Lux. This is the Sunday Riley Tidal Moisturizer, or the Brightening Enzyme Water Cream, if you will. And the truth is, out of the five moisturizers that I have going this month, I've been picking up this one the most. And it's not like I don't have, like the other ones aren't high end, really expensive, amazing moisturizers. They are. Um, but out of my Drug Elephant Proteiny, my Tatcha Water Cream, my Origins Ginseng Moisturizer, and then I sometimes use like a handful of other night masks. This is the one that I get excited to use the most. This is the one I reach for the most and I'm just like excited to use it every time. 
I don't know why. I would. I thought I wouldn't like this moisturizer that much, but I've already used like a good scoop out of it. I just, I don't know. I just like the way my skin feels after it. I like the texture of it. I feel like it's not like the Tatcha one or the Jerome Colifer ones are greasy, but there's like less residue on my face and on my fingers after I use this product. It really sinks into the skin. Like my skin just drinks this stuff up and it looks beautiful. It looks like even toned. I feel like it smooths out your skin tone and it just feels luxurious. And I like, love the glass packaging. I actually tried a Sunday Raleigh moisturizer before. I, I tried the CEO. And I just thought it was okay. Vitamin C in a moisturizer is a strange place to put vitamin C, honestly. Vitamin C belongs in either like a, like a toner and essence or straight up a serum. The C, a serum is the best way place to have a vitamin C. But I don't even know what the active ingredients are in this product. It says here, a lightweight oil-free gel cream moisturizer moisturizer for instantly glowing dewy skin two forms of advanced hyaluronic acid infuse water into the skin gently refining papaya enzymes smooth the look of texturized or dehydrated skin for a baby soft complexion alpha arbutrin brightens the appearance of discolorations for for clear radiance and yeah i definitely feel like it leaves my skin baby soft I think the hyaluronic acid is definitely like a big contributor of that fact and yeah I do feel like my skin is generally pretty bright because I, like, I'm constantly chemically exfoliating it but I feel like this has been an amazing product and I've, I've just been loving it so much. It's been great. So this month has been nutty cuckoo in terms of work um, but I did go for three days out to Quebec City and Montreal in Canada. My oh my. Is that place magical? It's magical every single time. I overheard some people talking on the radio about Montreal and Quebec City. And they described it as magical and that is what it is. And for anybody that lives in the Northeast and you have a passport, you gotta plan a trip out to Montreal because it's beautiful and so such a clean city and there's so much art. Like they have such an emphasis on art weed is legal so that makes them really chill the food is incredible and just like the how bilingual the city is is just and also quebec city is also equally bilingual like i always try to put my french foot forward every time i speak to anybody in quebec city or montreal first and then when they see me being like i don't know what you're saying <laughs> then they happily switch over to english but the the their just openness to whatever is clever <laughs> is amazing to see and a, the food is incredible i've actually been eating some pretty crappy food all month long because like i went to quebec city and i all they eat is just like cheese and poutine and schwartz sandwiches like the I, we went to schwartz in, in montreal and that is a legendary meat sandwich right there. We stopped in a couple of breweries too. It was just kind of funny because we had a bunch of IPAs over in Montreal, but then we went over to Quebec City, which is another is a very different city from Montreal. Montreal's more of a big city, um, and their like graffiti and their street art is just out of this world. Some of the most beautiful in the world. Quebec City is like older and it's colder, and it's a little bit more French. It's a little bit more isolated. But the buildings, it was my actually my third or fourth time going to Montreal, and my second time going to Quebec City. The amount of amazing little vintage stores, like really beautiful found objects stores, was awesome. I wish I had more money. I wish I could bring back some like found objects from Montreal and Quebec City because they really had a lot to offer. That was incredible to see. They were like little museums, some of these vintage shops. But Quebec City is really amazing because it just, both cities are very European feeling, but Quebec City seems like really like an ancient European city. Like it seems like almost gothy, almost Eastern European, or maybe even like Scottish. Like, like the, it seems so old. Like there's so all these like adorable, like stone buildings everywhere and it was a little bit dreary when we were there but the weather wasn't exactly amazing but 
we still tried a lot of really amazing food. We went to an incredible ramen bar, like apparently the best ramen that you could find in the city, and it was busy in there. But it was amazing and delicious. We had some really incredible poutine several times. I think we had a, a poutine at one point or another every single day. We went to a kitty cat cafe. I've never been to a cat cafe before. Sadly, all the kitties were sleeping, but they were beautiful. Like they had one kitty that had this beautiful like spotted bangle-esque looking coat. They had one beautiful little Siamese kitty, uh, one really fluffy old ragdoll kitty, like and like this one cat. I couldn't, I didn't, wasn't familiar with the breed, but it had this really interesting crimped coat. Like it had a, the cat's fur had like really interesting, like a, it had a really interesting curl to it. So that was a standout moment and. And Quebec City also had incredible artwork too, like we walked under this bridge and you know how like every bridge in the world, um, like like the freeway bridges, you know, they're just sub suspended f highways. They have these uh, columns holding them up and the columns were painted like gothic cathedrals. That was incredible to see. And I did discover one of my favorite beers in Quebec City. I have actually two favorite beers of the month. We had the first beer came from um, this brewery. This is a sticker I picked up from them. They're called Noctem Artisan Brasseur. They are a kitty cat themed craft brewery in Quebec City. And they are amazing. It was the best beer I think I had in all of Canada. And I know Unipro it comes from Quebec and that was the first craft beer I really got into was from Unibro, the Trois Pistoles and the Fondument. Those like French Canadian beers, those they're very strong and they're very bold and I love them, but <laughs> I'm sorry. This this beer, this brewery, I think they exist for me. Like they're these beers are made for me. I got one of their coasters and the, it has a cute little kitty cat joke. See if you can get the joke. <laughs> when me and my boyfriend saw this joke, we just couldn't, like, we just cracked up laughing. Let me just show you what's going on here. So the kitty cat shows up t to the bar. He's a cool little cat with glasses. He orders a beer and he starts playing with the beer and he knocks it over. <laughs> he just knocks it over. He goes, he just, and then he walks out. It's a cat joke. And I loved him so much that I even got this cute t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, they have amazing beers. They have a lot of like very New England style IPAs and sessions and what have you. They're like a craft brewery and they're nice and hazy and juicy and they're kitty cat themed. So I approve, like what could be better? I do have a couple of the beer cans that I brought home and the, the packaging and the artwork and the whole concept behind everything is great and their beers taste great and I love it. Let me show you the, what the beer cans look like. So this one right here is called Catnip and this is like their flagship and look how funny the packaging is. This is just like a regular IPA, like a New England style IPA and it's called Catnip because you're gonna love it the way a cat loves catnip. It's just that delicious and the packaging is pretty funny. And then I also picked up a four pack of these of which there's only one left but this is the Hop Rush IPA and it's got a little baby kitty on it. The other one is more of like a classic IPA. This is a session. It's a little bit of a younger IPA. It's like a more of a fresh cut kind of flavor. That's why they chose to depict a little baby kitty instead of an adult kitty. So so I very much love that brewery. Like that brewery just spoke to me. But that wasn't the only beer that really stood out to me this month. I also worked a ton at the Big E and at the Big E there are lots of beer tents of which we, me and my boyfriend became really good friends with one of the beer tents. It was the Connecticut beer tent because I, we were working the Connecticut booth and yeah my my boyfriend would be drawing caricatures of them and they would just give him some free beer and by the end of it all we became really good friends but the beer from that tent that really stood out was called war poet or i think it was called winter war poet from i had to look it up the the brewery it's from lasting brass brewing co from oakville connecticut 
And you guys, this is one of the most delicious beers that I tried there. It was hazy and juicy. I don't know. I just like, it's just like a standout beer that I had at that, at the Biggie. And I just highly recommend it. I think I want to go to their brewery, bre brewery, brewery. Why is that so hard to say? Because I also say that out of all the beer tents at the Big E, that one stands out. I think uh, it's hard to say which one's my favorite. Maybe I'm biased because I was working in the Connecticut building, made such good friends, but you know, it's all about how the beers taste, right? The thing is, Connecticut ha is just where the scene is moving the quickest. Like there's so much going on in the Connecticut beer scene. I think the, the Connecticut beer scene is doing more than the Massachusetts beer scene, even though I am such a Massachusetts girl and I that this is my home and I they do a great job here too. You know, Massachusetts is the home of Treehouse, which is arguably one of the most standout breweries in the country. I think they're a little bit overrated. I'm out constantly on the hunt for comparable beers to Treehouse, but uh, Winter War Poet, definitely better. I think Winter War Poet, better than any beer that I tried at Treehouse. I know, I know. If you follow be the craft beer scene, that is a bold statement, <laughs> but it's delicious. I highly recommend it. That's That might be my favorite beer that I tried this month. I think this might be the last thing I'm gonna mention is music. <laughs> when me and Mike were in Canada, in Quebec City at night uh, when we were just chilling inside the Airbnb. We discovered, we started listening to the new single from Lil Nas X, you know, Old Country Road, you know the you know the one. We started listening to Panini and I love that new single. I think it's so catchy and it's also like very, it's, it's hip hop but it's poppy. I just think Lil Nas X has a lot of style and I like that he's having so much fun. Both Lizzo and Lil Nas X, I feel like they're having so much fun being a part of the scene, being leaders of the scene and being very revolutionary and bringing us in on the fun. I love it. And I love the music video, but he's really cute. What can I say? He's a handsome boy. So I like looking at him. And yeah, we spent like a good amount of time in the hotel room trying to learn the words to Panini, just trying to like, <laughs> cause he has a certain flow, you know, it seems like a simple song, but you have to uh, pick up on the rhythm exactly right to be able to do it. <laughs> so it's a little tough. Hey Panini, don't you be a meanie. Thought you wanted me to go up while you're trying to keep me teeny. Uh, it's a dreamy. Wished it on a genie. Got I got fans finally. Ain't you wanting them to see me? Uh. <laughs> did I? Did I? Did I do it? That's enough. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching my favorites video. I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me a little bit about what kept you going in the month of September. Was it a good month for you? Was it a bad month? Was there tough moments? Because I worked like crazy, so. This favorites video, I feel like, is a little on the short side. I don't feel like I mentioned a ton of stuff, but because it was so fast moving, I feel like I didn't have time to complain about anything, basically, <laughs> except how sore my back is from um, hurting myself, carrying all that equipment into the biggie. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. I really enjoyed hanging out with you. And until next time, cheers. Bye.